Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're going to be building Sincere Towing, the February kit of the month from Foscale Models. So Foscale Models has a program uh, you can join and get one kit delivered to your house uh, every month for six months or for a year. Uh, what a great offer. So today I'm going to show you um, how I'm building the February kit. So let's head over to the workbench and get started. In today's episode, we're going to be focusing on this structure right here. So I've already So I've already stained my walls. Uh, I used just black acrylic paint and added a lot of water to it and stained the walls. I then took a sponge and using vintage white from folk art, I sponged on uh, white over the walls to give it a peeled paint look. What was difficult about this was that uh, since I'm doing a complete detailed interior, I did not brace the back of my walls. So when I stained them, I had to go over the wall very lightly. It probably took me two, three coats of the stain. Um, and then also staining the backside at the same time as the front. And then with my hair dryer, I uh, quickly dried the walls. Uh, this, they warped a little bit, but as I was drying them, I bent them um, to straighten them out. So, but that was the problem that I ran into with this. Next, um, here is my corner trim that I've stained. I'll paint this red and then um, put them onto the corners and assemble my walls. So for my corner trim and windows, I am using deep red. Now I'm just using this because it's what I have on hand, uh, but you can use any red that you want. I'm sure that Folk Art or Americana also makes a deep red. And then I will be applying it with a sponge. So you just want to dab it into the paint and then dab a bunch of it off. And then lightly dab it onto your trim. And this will give you a peeled paint look. Because we are fully detailing the inside of the structure, we need to detail each wall before we put them together. So this is the back wall. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a casting here. This casting originally had a box and a can on top of it and I took my saw um, this saw right here and cut that off we'll put that on the floor uh, below the workbench we cut that off because we're gonna put that there and I know it's in front of the window but <laughs> that's just the way it is <laughs> Um, this shelf is going to go right above it. 
That's why I cut the stuff off the uh, top. Now originally on this one, there was a board that ran the whole length of it. And I took my Dremel tool and cut that off, leaving two posts at each end. I thought it would look nice having those at each end to make it look like that's what's supporting the shelf. So then for our workbench, we are gonna put another barrel on this end here and that workbench will sit on there just like that and then we'll put some rusted signs on the wall and then um, I'm going to have to take some chalk powders pastel chalk powder and weather the walls I started this one you can see where you can see the difference So next, I am going to put a black primer on all of these detailed parts. Um, on this wall, we are going to put a workbench there. And then right above it on the wall, there's a shelving unit. So we'll put a black primer on these. And then I will show you how I paint these castings. So I first put a black, a flat black primer on my detailed castings. And I explained this in another video of mine um, uh, on painting detail castings. Uh, my technique is I spray paint it black, not worrying about getting it into the cracks. I let it dry and then I take black acrylic paint and thin it down with some water and put a wash over the parts. And that gets the uh, black paint into all of the cracks. Then I let that completely dry. And then as you can see, I took a flat gray spray paint and went over all of the parts and what this does is it highlights everything so i can really see what all of the parts are if i leave it a solid black it's kind of hard to to tell what the individual uh, parts are that are maybe on the workbench and stuff so this really brings out the details. So we're gonna start by painting all of the wood. And we are using desert sand. And we're just going to dry brush it. And we're not worrying about Getting the paint on um, the other details, that's fine. Uh, we'll go over those later. We're gonna warm the wood up just a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit of raw sienna. So 
So you can see I'm just kind of blending it together. And again, get most of the paint off your brush. Now when we've got everything painted on this, I'm going to put a black wash over it. So it goes into all the cracks. And it will tone down uh, the colors also. So let me see if I can give you a close-up look. We're going to use French wine. So we'll start by painting the little toolbox. And let's make our barrel red, and we'll put a white stripe on it. Okay, I think that is, I think that's good for the red. Next. We're going to do green. And we'll make this little bottle here green. And then we'll make this barrel green with a white stripe. Now we're going to use baby blue. We'll make this big can on the workbench blue. We'll make a can in here blue. Now we're going to use Sea Breeze. Now this color is really bright, but uh, when we put black over it, a black wash, it will tone down. Next, I'm going to use antique gold now we're going to use silver now most of our parts we're going to start out by painting them silver then we'll go back in and paint uh, some rust maybe on some of them
There's a, a spool with some wire on it on the top shelf here. So I'm just gonna dry brush that so you can see the wire. Then I'll paint the top of the spool a wood color. And then I'm going to use raw sienna. So this is going to be our rust and I'm just going to go on the edges of some of the silver items. Even a little bit on the edge of some of the other items. Next we're going to use burnt umber. The burnt umber will go over the hinges on the cabinet. The burnt umber would represent old rust. We'll put just a little bit here and there. Maybe the handle on this little tool. Just adding a little bit of rust on this can back here. Just putting little dots at the edge of this can. We're kind of dry brushing, just hitting the edges. Okay, now we'll take vintage white from folk art. Next, we're going to add a black wash over everything. So we're just going to use black acrylic paint. Sorry, my palette needs to be cleaned again. Let's see if I can get this in view for you. Okay, so see it's pretty light it's hard to tell now it won't be as dark when it dries it will definitely lighten now I'm gonna go back in with the Desert sand. Same on the workbench, just a little bit here and there. So you've probably noticed that I've just used the uh, same brush for the entire process. Um, it's a zero. Comes to a nice point. Uh, I really like it. 
Now, I have quite a mess going here on my workbench. But I'm using an orange colored pastel chalk and I'm just streaking it down over those barrels. Toning down the white. I don't know if you can see that. Going to take my black wash. And wash over the hinges. So here are the signs that came with the kit. And I'll cut these out and then we will add some rust to them. So to rust our signs, we're going to use a sponge and raw umber. So we're just dipping the sponge into the paint and then dabbing a lot of it off. And then very lightly sponging it onto the sign. And we're just focusing on the edges. So I'm just holding it down with my tweezers so it doesn't move and stick to the sponge. Okay, that part is done. Well, before we move on, what we're going to do is we're going to take our burnt umber again. And we need to paint the edges of the paper. So just run your brush along each edge. This gets rid of that white and makes it look more like metal and not a piece of paper. Now you can also take some pastel chalks and we're using the uh, orange uh, rust color And we're just brushing it directly onto the sign. Since we have all of our rust color out, our rust colored paint and pastels, I'm going to add some rust to these tanks. And I'm just using a number zero brush and just going along the bottom. We'll go a little bit at the top right where it curves 
And we're just kind of dabbing it, getting some little dots and some little lines, like maybe scratches. And then we will paint uh, the caps on them silver. I will try to show you up close. So here is our other wall. You can see I just glued on the signs that we had painted and uh, the tanks. Next, I'm going to add a, a pipe running down, maybe for electrical, just a simple detail um, that I think will be really nice. Uh, and what I'm using is, it's kind of like a fishing line. It's sold in the bead section of a craft store. I don't know if it's made for necklaces, something to do with beads. Um, and as you can see, I have copper and silver, but they also make this in black and all different colors. So, and as you can see, um, $7.99, and this spool will last me the rest of my life. So I cut a silver piece and we are going to take some super glue, put some at the top, some at the bottom. We're just going to hold that there until it sets up. After the glue completely dries, I can take some pastel chalk and add a little bit of dirt around it. You could have a wire coming down, going into a box for a light switch. So real quick, I'm actually going to make a little light switch. So I'm going to take some silver paint. And I have a thin strip of wood. And I'm going to paint the end of it silver. Then we will cut a little bit off of the end. And we're making it more of a rectangle than we are a square. I'm going to put a dab of glue on the back side of it. Just cleaning up the glue that kind of seeped out a little bit. Okay, so there is our box. Now we'll take our silver cording. We'll put super glue on each end. First, we'll glue it right at the top of the box. Move this over just a little bit.
that's what's nice about using uh, Loctite is that you actually have just a little bit of time to move it around before it completely sets up. And there we have it. So I'm just going to add a little light switch with some black paint. If you wanted to add a little bit of rust to the pipe, you could. That finishes that wall. So I'm sanding the back of this sign for the side of the building. And I'm using 150 grit sandpaper. I'm getting some areas really thin in the middle. Actually making some holes. Okay, so we'll just take regular Elmer's glue and we'll take a, a wet paintbrush and smear that glue around. Now we will take our wall and I probably should have done this before I detailed the back of it, but that's okay. That's how it goes. Just trying to push it down into those cracks of the boards. In areas I'm actually cutting through, poking it right into the slit. Now I'm just adding some pastel chalks. Um, to weather it and we can add more after it's all uh, assembled next I'm going to paint my windows and I'm going to paint three um, per the instructions there's a building that goes on the side I am moving that building to the back of the structure which means I'm gonna have to move the door to the other side so on this one I'm going to have to cut out an opening for the door And then we have a window that goes here and a winding a window that goes right here in this one because we're putting that building in the back corner it'll be like that and then we have a window on this wall 
So that's our three windows that we need. And because you can see them from the inside, I'm going to paint the inside of the window um, a brown color to match the wood that's inside. So I'll do that next. So I had to cut a little piece of wood to fill this in. And if I'd have thought ahead about it, I could have matched it or cut that wall all the way up and then just replace that piece at the end and then put my wire down the seam. I could have hit it better, but that's okay. I'll stain this because this wall goes up against this wall like this. So I'll just stain that to match and it'll be fine. I, uh, you probably notice I'm jumping around a lot on this project. Um, <laughs> part of it is I did not read the instructions, which is a big no, no. I always tell people at least read the instructions two to three times before you actually start a structure. That's always the best. Um, and another thing is that uh, doing this project, and I'll show you. Um, doing this entire project, I have been going on very little sleep uh, trying to get this done and do my day job. So, so I apologize. I'm a little scatterbrained. Um, but we'll get it built and uh, it'll turn out great. So there is our patched wall. Not too bad. So I've added a bit of glue. Okay, we'll just hold that in place for a little bit. Put up any little glue that's coming out. Just cleaning up some glue that's in the corners. On each of the walls, before I glued them, I actually ran my file over the edges so there's no little gaps or spaces it makes it so that it glues really nice again using our grid Okay, it's all lined up and we'll just hold that until the glue sets up a little bit. It really doesn't take a lot of glue and as long as you handle your structures with care and you're gentle with them, um, they'll be fine. I use white Elmer's glue and sometimes I use um, Elmer's wood glue. I'm out of the wood glue right now. That's the only reason why I'm not using it. Okay, and for our wood floor, Now 
we will glue it to that. So I put in a center beam to support the roof card and then also added two cross beams. So I wanted to quick show you how this uh, structure connects to this one. And I'll show you, I had to make a custom roof. So obviously this roof came with it. And then it came with this little dormer that was supposed to just go on the side. I wanted to make this section so that it connected to this building. So I have all of my windows in my door in place. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to dry brush using desert sand. So I'm just going to hit the edges. Just to give it even more of a chipped, peeled paint look. This will also tone down that red. Okay, the doors are glued in place. So that finishes up our structure. So I added one last detail. I used brown construction paper for the plate and then just took the uh, pipe that came with the kit and rusted it up some. <laughs> backwards And there is our structure so far. So after looking at my doors a little closer, I decided to add a little bit more rust detail.
hopefully the glare's not too bright. Um, I won't know what it looks like until I go to edit this. So I think that's it for this. Um, I think that is a great little kit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I think a very important tip is to take your time and build up your layers very slowly. And of course, use lots of patience. <laughs> so, well, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload more videos. Thanks for watching. Till next time, happy modeling.